A couple of weeks ago I uploaded a video on the channel showing how to paint a green glowing power sword. And at the time I thought that that video is actually pretty easy to follow and the sword doesn't take that much time to actually paint. But then I showed it to my friend Adam, who looked at it and said, oh, can you just show me something easier and faster? So challenge accepted, I guess. In this video, I'm going to be showing you three of the easiest ways and the fastest ways that I can think of to paint the power sword. Hey guys, I'm Zoltan and you're watching Phalanx Miniatures. All right, let's start with a version that requires only two colors and you can do the entire thing by brush. Once you have the sword primed black, all you need is a nice white color. Ideally, don't use Citadel because the whites from Citadel are just really difficult to work with. I used AK Interactive here and water it down just a little bit. Then look at your sword and try to identify the different parts of it. In my case, as you can see, there is two sides of the blade on the left and the right, and there is this middle wider section. And our job now is to make sure that there is a color transition on all three of those surfaces. And because in my case there is three of them, obviously one of them is going to be going in the same direction. So now we have to load our brush with the white paint that we watered down, but remove most of it from the brush on a paper towel. Just drag it along the paper towel so that you are left with barely any paint on the brush. Then you start painting the white paint onto the sword from, let's say, the halfway point, or maybe a little bit more from where you want it to be darker towards where you want it to be lighter. And after the middle, I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the left and the right side of the blade, but making sure that I alternate the colors. So I'm dragging the paint on the left side towards the bottom, and then I'm dragging it towards the top on the right. And obviously this looks pretty ugly right now, but don't worry, that's just the first steps. It's gonna be much better looking at the end. You can see now the lights are established. We know exactly where they are going to be on the sword. So what I need to do now is to do the exact same thing again, but this time cover less of the surface. So let's say, like 80% of the surface that I covered before. I don't touch anything that previously left black and I just paint within the already established white parts, but make sure that I leave a little bit of the previous layer visible, right? I only cover, let's say, 80% of what I painted before. You only have to be careful about two things. Always drag the brush towards where the light should be stronger and also don't paint anything that is not dried yet. If you paint something that is still wet, you're going to lift off the previous layer and it's gonna be ugly and smudgy, you don't want that. If you are in a hurry or impatient like me, then you can also try to dry it faster with a hair dryer or also just an airbrush blasting air at it. And once you are done with this layer, you can do the whole thing once again, once again covering a little bit less, and you will notice that towards the tip of the sword, for example, where I wanted to have my lights, it's covering almost fully now. And the more of these layers you do, the more small increments you do on the swords, the more the transition is going to look smooth in the end. But don't worry about it too much because we are going to apply the actual color over this anyway, and that's going to smooth it out a little bit for us as well, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Once you've done three, four of these layers and you reached basically full opacity on the tip of the swords or where you want the light to be, then what you can do is you can smooth out the layers a little bit with just some glazing, so watering down the white paint even more. But don't sweat it too much because depending on how your gradient is on the swords, the other color is just going to smooth it out anyway. You can also do an edge highlight at this stage already, like I did, but honestly you can also skip it, especially if you are in a hurry, because we are going to do uh, just a normal edge highlight at the end anyway. And that's it, that was the hard part, now it's time for something fun and magical to happen, and all you need for it is just fluorescent paint, any color, any paint range. Put it on your wet palette, water it down a little bit, and then just apply it on the whole sword. That's it. You will notice that it barely does anything, and that's perfectly fine, don't worry. Just let it dry, and then just do it again. All you need is a little bit of patience, because it covers very, very poorly. Any kind of fluorescent paint is going to be like that. If you're batch painting, let's say you have 10 swords, then it's super easy because you just apply one layer on all, and then start from the beginning again. If you want to paint a single one like I did, then you can once again use a hairdryer or an airbrush with just blasting air. But just keep at it and you will notice that after applying it for the fourth, fifth time, it's coming together. You will see the effect. It will stain the black a little bit, so it's going to be like a dark greenish color, and it will cover over a transition, making it much smoother, and at the tip of the sword it should become this really neon green glowy thing. Or neon red or orange or whatever color you choose actually, I was just going with the green here. And once you are satisfied with the glowness, either you can leave it like that, if that's fine for you, or you can also apply a nice edge highlight to make it even more glowy. All you need is the same white color that you used before, but this time without any water added. Load your brush, remove most of it on a paper towel, and then just use the side of the brush to run it along the edge, and that's basically it. It won't win you any golden demons, but the difficult part was maybe like 4-5 or five minutes, and then the biggest chunk of time was actually just waiting for the fluorescent paint to dry, 
and you are left with a pretty nice power sword. That was pretty fast if you ask me, but if you want to do something even faster and easier and you have access to an airbrush, then here's the next one for you. The setup is the same as before, so we have a black primer and I'm going to be using a white paint, but this time I'm going to be using it through the airbrush and I'm going to be applying it to the whole sword. Instead of creating transitions on different parts of the blade, I'm just going to have one big transition on the entire blade. This is probably the easiest exercise you can do with an airbrush because the dilution doesn't really matter too much at this point. You just start in the middle of the sword and then you start moving up your layers, just like I did before with the brush really on the previous sword, but this time on the whole sword and using an airbrush. Simply apply more layers towards where you want to have the light and do it until the whole thing is covered fully by the white. The whole exercise should take you something like 30 seconds per sword. Once you have the white established with the airbrush, then you need some color once again through the airbrush. And you really have three choices here. You can use an ink, you can use a contrast paint, which is basically an ink, or you can once again use the fluorescent paint that I was using for the previous sword. You're going to probably get the best result out of fluorescent paint again, but that's much more difficult to apply because once again, lots of layers, but with contrast, you do it in a second. And the end result is going to be super vibrant because that's what contrast does. And the nice thing about contrast is that you can just put it into the airbrush as it is, you don't have to dilute it, and then you can just blast away on the whole sword. And if you went a bit too overboard and there's too much paint on the sword, you can just blast a little bit of air towards the darker parts and you can just blow it away. And if you want to really go for speed, you can just leave it at that or you can apply some edge highlights like I did. And here I actually went a little bit too heavy with the edge highlights because I tried two different colors, but in the end, I think one would have been enough. So you can just do a white once again. The third version is going to be slightly more complicated, but still very, very fast, and you only need a single color to pull it off. The third version is going to be a bit trickier to do, but still very fast, and you only require a single color to do it. Once again, I'm using the black primer as my undercoat, and then I'm going to be using Temple Guard Blue to do all the work, and the help of a little bit of masking tape to mask the rest of the blade that I'm not working on. The tape can be a bit fiddly to apply, but honestly, it's mostly because this blade is a bit weird. It's uh, not exactly straight and it also has this interesting intricate design in the middle. But once you have it covered, you can just use the Temple Guide Blue through the airbrush, slightly diluted, and do exactly what I did before with the white, but this time with the blue. So as usual, we apply it from the middle point of the blade or slightly further down and then making sure that everything that is towards the light, where we want the blade to be brightest, is fully covered by the paint. And of course you can go fancier as well, you can use different colors brighter and brighter towards the tip of the sword. But of course that requires us to change colors in the airbrush, which takes time and it's a bit of a hassle. So instead what I'm doing here is I'm just using the transparency of the paint, where the black is shining through it becomes darker, and when I'm fully covering something it's way brighter. And I'm sure that you guys can guess what I'm going to do next. I'm going to be removing the tape, applying it to the side that I just painted once it's dry. And then I'm going to do the whole process again, but in the opposite direction on the other side of the blade. The first two swords can actually work without edge highlighting as well, but I think for this to come together you really need to apply some edge highlights. I'm just going to use the usual white here, and honestly, you could probably use different colors so that, for example, on the black parts of the blade you would not be using a very harsh white, bright color. But in the end, I think just to make it faster and easier, a white works really well and the difference is not going to be huge. As you can see, the edge highlights really make this work, right? Without those, it looked a little bit janky, but with the edge highlights separating the different parts of the blade, this actually works quite well. So these were the three easiest ways I can think of to paint a power sword. Did you guys like any of them? Which one was your favorite? Also, do you guys prefer these easier methods or do you like to paint your power sword a little bit longer but then also want to have a better result? Let me know in the comments below. And thank you very much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe learned something that you can use in your own painting process. If you did, please consider giving it a like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. See you in the next one.